So I actually came to Egypt because my best friend in England, his sister was working out here. She calls me up one day and is like, I've got a great job for you. And I said, what the hell are you on about? I'm not coming to Egypt, that sounds insane. But now here I am six years later, so clearly something went well. As soon as I came here, you know, started going out to different events and seeing what the knife life was like. Like, everyone's so friendly here, everyone's so opening and supportive of each other. Like, people really appreciate what's going on. Music I've been making a lot, uh, mostly, is mainly organic house, Dan Tempo, um, a little bit of techno. The first instrument I really got into was learning the guitar. When I turned 15, um, I decided I really wanted to be a singer because I'm, I'm naturally a really terrible singer. I have to work really hard to make it sound like I know what I'm doing when it comes to singing. You know, and as I got in my teenage years, I was in a lot of various rock and metal bands. I was a screamer for a rock while and all this stuff. Wanted to record all the bands that I was a part of. I wanted to get into the music production so we could start making demos and that. You know, eventually it opened up my eyes to you know, electronic music. At the moment, uh, the bands that are really influencing my sound include bands like Clipping, that their production's absolutely insane. Artists like, uh, just from the, the energy perspective, Mark Rebulet and uh, Gab Rom, uh, Tatches, Cora. People always say you have to make you know, a thousand shit songs before you can, can I swear? <laughs> you have to make a thousand shit songs before you can make one good song. Any free time I have is pretty much always dedicated to working on a you know, new track or regardless if you're going to release it or not, regardless if anyone else is going to hear it. If you are making stuff constantly, you are constantly learning. If you compare yourself to the artists that you like, like the artists that you're being inspired from, um, you know, it's always helpful to literally like play your back tracks back to back to those ones and you think it sounds as good, then, then you know it's, gonna, it's ready for release. So I find it's always really important to just get the equipment that works really well for your own workflow. So I have all the, the mixes and everything set up for when I'm performing live. Uh, but when I'm working in the studio, most of the time, I'm just with the mouse and keyboard. And then I, I just have my guitars as well, just to get that. You know, I like adding sort of a live, uh, you know, organic sort of sound to my music as well. When it comes to performing uh, live and the music production that I'm doing at home, like both of them, completely give me different outlets to express my music. Like when I'm at home and I'm sitting in my studio working on a song, I can spend hours like tuning in and fine tuning all the sounds that I want to do. That's for me, that's like when I'm really locked inside, like I'm, I'm making the, those sounds. <laughs> Against that, like when I'm performing live, that's when you're completely in the moment. You're just feeling off the energy of the crowd, showcasing what you've spent hours and hours, like tweaking tiny little dials and stuff like, that's where you get the chance to express it. Have that extra connection to the crowd so it's not just the house or techno music playing off a speaker, or it's not just the DJ selecting the music. Like, I'm putting out like some of my performance alongside you know, the tracks that I've created. The most fun I had performing was definitely when I went to, down to Siwa with um, Playground Agency and we filmed, uh, we filmed a live set on uh, one of these little islands right in the middle of the oasis and it was absolutely beautiful. Towards the end of the set when the sun had gone down, like I was just singing to the moon on the middle of this island and it was it was really great fun. It was really awesome. When I'm playing an event live, like, you know, I'm thinking about, okay, is this gonna look good when someone catches it? You know, it makes a story on Instagram. And that's another way to get your eyes in front of promoters now. Like, it's definitely a huge part of uh, of the, the, the scene today. It's just uh, you know, making sure that you're putting up content. I probably first started actively thinking about it about a year and a half ago, like before then, I didn't focus on any social media. This is another reason why I like the scene in Egypt, because people are very supportive here online as well. And that, that doesn't really happen in England. This year, as well as working and continuing to focus on my stuff with Shunas, myself and uh, other performer called Jin, we just finished recording our first debut album. We're called Wolfang Midi. We're a synthwave in 80s inspired duo. It started because I was showing off the different songs that I used to make, the old albums I was working on. And she really connected with that stuff, so I was like, why don't we make something together? So one of my favorite pieces of 
advice that's really resonated with me recently. There's a producer called uh, Mark Rebule. He did this one song on the spot about uh, being stuck and being in a creative rut. And it's just basically him saying, no one cares. No one gives a shit about your artistic integrity. And as long as you're working on yourself, it doesn't matter what you're doing.